Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, uh, talk in the IDO uh, track. Uh, my name is Alberto Bustamante. I will be talking about uh, exposing just one IP uh, for all your gateway receivers in Kubernetes. Uh, but I have to say that uh, I'm very excited for being here today because I have attended many conferences and technical events, meetup, etc. But actually, this is the first time that I'm presenting something. So let's see how, how it goes. OK, first, uh, let me introduce myself briefly. Uh, as I said, my name is Alberto. I'm from Madrid in Spain. Um, I'm an Ericsson employee uh, since 2009. Uh, I have been working as mainly as a software developer all these years. Um, I have been contributing to the to the Geode community for the last uh, a year and a half when I started working as an um, open source developer uh, in collaboration with uh, Ericsson Software Technology, uh, which is um, an Ericsson company uh, focused on open source contribution and, and development. And what else? Uh, more the more the most important roles I have. Uh, I'm married and. I'm a father of a two years old girl, uh, but uh, actually we are respecting our second daughter in just a few weeks. So this is why I always say that uh, my wife is running on a grade. Um, I have chosen this uh, photo of myself for this slide um, because I think it, it uh, reflects what it has been my, my status since March. That is me working at home uh, while my uh, daughter is playing around. So I think this sounds familiar to some of you. OK, we can start with the presentation. Mm, what's this about? Well, I want to describe a, a problem or a improvement opportunity, so to say, uh, that we found when setting up um, uh, two geo clusters running in different uh, Kubernetes clusters. Uh, then I will explain how we tried to solve it, uh, some secondary prom problems that we found, and and the work done, and that is pe and also the work pending to to fix all of them. Um, well, our use case starts here. I mean, uh, when you have a IDO cluster and you want to increase uh, fault tolerance and data availability. You can configure other redundant cluster and communicate both both of them using the uh, one distribution feature. Uh, you know, Geo allows uh, replication of events uh, among clusters using uh, an asynchronous uh, queue system, uh, which is implemented uh, by gateway senders and gateway receivers that you have to set up in your clusters. The thing is that when uh, we needed to implement uh, this setup in, in Kubernetes. The first approach that uh, we tried was to configure a Kubernetes service per each uh, gateway receiver. This means, of, this means, of course, that um, each gateway receiver needs to be reachable from outside the, the Kubernetes cluster. And that implies that you have to configure your network in your service mesh, uh, firewalls, etc. So it was decided that it will be a, a good idea to to improve this. We, um, with these uh, two goals in mind, the first one is uh, to simplify configuration of the networking um, whenever a, a receiver is created, and also. Uh, to know the IP and port values of the receivers in advance. This, these were the two main goals we had. Mm, this is needed because uh, Kubernetes uh, configuration is declarative. Uh, you describe the configuration, the, the status of the application you want, not the operations to reach that status. So this is why you need to know the IPs and ports that your application will use 
to to make the, the the configuration in your networking so for for reaching these goals we identified um two issues two main issues the first one was the the random port allocation of the receivers um, when you create a, a gateway receiver you have to specify a port range and the receiver will use a, a random port within that range so it was decided that instead of allocating a whole range of ports for all the possible receivers you can configure will we we will be using just uh, one port so for doing so uh, for receivers uh, we will use the same value for the start port and end port parameters just to configure a range with containing just one port the second issue was the the ip of the receivers uh, because the the receiver ip is, is assigned by kubernetes uh, so how could we how we could uh, know in advance the receiver ip to configure the network well uh, receivers currently has a parameter called hostname for senders that you can use to define the hostname or an ip uh, that will be used by the senders to connect to that receiver so you can use that uh, parameter for this but uh, you still need to define the the ip the value that will be there so you need a well-tested algorithm to calculate uh, which IP will be assigned to each receiver to um, to the member uh, server X on cluster N, whatever. So and you still have this, the problem uh, that there is network configuration to be done per each receiver. So to simplify that, it was decided to, um, to use just one uh, value, the same value for hostname for sender parameter, uh, and check how it goes. So we move from an implementation of something like this to just using uh, one Kubernetes service for for all your receivers. Okay. Uh, well, as I said, then all our receivers. Uh, we'll use the same value for the hostname for sender parameter and the same value for start port and end port parameters. And, and we are exposing the, the receivers using just one uh, Kubernetes service. The main issue here um, is that uh, the, the connections from the senders are route, uh, route by Kubernetes, so they may end up in uh, in different in a different receiver than they were trying to connect to but this was not really an issue in our use case i, I will explain why um especially if, um, if we solve the secondary problems that we identified that were re related with the replication uh, with uh, pings from server to from receiver to from sender to receiver, sorry, and an issue with the serial gateway senders. Uh, regarding replication, well, this is the, um, we have one test case that was uh, uh, shutting down one, one server, and it was identified that in that case, uh, all the receivers were considered down so this is uh, this was the, one of the first tickets i think uh, i i was assigned to when i joined the community and it, uh, i spent a lot of time with it <laughs> um well first i implemented these helm charts to reproduce the problem they are available in that uh, url here um with that you can configure uh, two geode clusters with one locator two servers and one partition region and parallel gateway senders on one cluster and receivers exposed with the same uh, um, with the same service on cluster two and it was uh, easy, easy to reproduce that killing one server on cluster two made that uh, 
the senders were disconnected from the from the uh, receivers. The problem is, is that uh, Geode was not prepared for uh, such configuration we were using, um, and the locator uh, was using uh, the server, um, the um, the host and port, sorry, to identify a server. This is um this map here is from the uh, the connection the um, locator is uh, load the snapshot class and there you can see that the the, the entries to the, the the connection load information from a a given server was using the the server location uh, a server location object as a key and that class only contains the host and uh, the port of a given server. So what uh, we did was to uh, implement this new class, uh, server location and member ID, to really identify, to be able to identify uh, servers uh, sharing the same host uh, and port, adding the unique ID also as part of the, of the identification of that server. So, the, the change uh, seems uh, so simple, but of course this implied to, uh, a lot of changes in different parts of the code and, and of course uh, new testing. Other issue we saw with the, our configuration was related with the pings. Uh, we saw that um, after this, the, um, the cluster was up and running, both clusters, if, we're, if we were not running any traffic, uh, the senders were disconnected uh, after some time. Um, and after some investigation, we found out that the connections were, were closed by the client health monitor process from the receivers, because that process is suspecting uh, pings messages from uh, senders. So if they don't receive any ping in a given time, uh, they disconnect. So in that case, as uh, the pings were were sent, but uh, as I said, the, the connections were handled by Kubernetes, so this, those messages could end up in a different server, that, and that was what uh, happening. So the solution that uh, actually was uh, an idea from Bruce Sussert, but thank you for that, um, was to implement a, some kind of distributed ping. Um, so now, if the receiver uh, receives an, a ping that um, it was not intended for for him. Is forwarded to the to the correct server. So, also apart from Bruce, for this um, this ticket that that involves the part of the replication and the ping issue, I would like also to thank you to Dan and to Juan Jose Ramos that were because they were helping me a lot uh, in the implementation and all the problems I found. Um, well, that's the part that we already have implemented in this uh, in this uh, Geo ticket, and there is also a third uh, um, problem that we want to fix. That is is currently a limitation in our setup. Is that we cannot use more than one thread in in serial gateway senders because of the reason that they, those threads could be connected to different uh, receivers at the same time. So some time ago, I uh, I wrote this uh, RFC, and hopefully I will uh, contribute uh, in the next uh, days uh, with the code. The fix is that um, currently or, or all the threads of the serial gateway sender are started in parallel, so they connect to the to the receiver with no problem. So the um, in our case, the the fix. Uh, consist on um, uh, start f uh, one thread first, then it will it will be connected to a, a receiver to a given receiver, um, and after that is done, uh, that thread can uh, tell the other threads the the ID the member ID of the the receiver uh, that it is connected to, so the other uh, threads they can start and uh, once they, they are connected they can verify if they are connected to the same receiver than the first thread. 
of course this imply a lot of maybe a lot of tries uh, until they reach the proper server but well that's something we have to to do okay um, some conclusions about um, all this uh, the, the, or configuration is that I think uh, we found uh, a way to use less configuration in the network in the networking for uh, comparing to the um, to using one service uh, one Kubernetes service per receiver. Um, it looks like an acceptable short-term solution, and well, the random server connection is not uh, an issue in at least in our use case. But the cons is that, uh, of course, these random connections that uh, uh, is, are done by Kubernetes, so you don't have control over them. And of course, this approach cannot be used for client-server communication because, uh, in that case, uh, clients need sometimes need to connect to to a specific server to the server containing the the primary bucket for an entry, for example. So you cannot uh, trust on that you will be connected to whatever server. And well, also other secondary problems could appear because um, not all the geo tests are done with uh, this configuration in mind. So uh, actually there is a, a, a feature being implemented about using um, a proxy uh, in the geo connections and i think that after that is in place i mean although you're introdu this is introducing um this a new uh, element to configure in the network because i mean you are using a proxy you have to configure it i think we should try to move to that uh, to that approach instead of using this but let's see in the in the future how it goes. Okay, and that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. We have a lot of time. I think I run a lot. <laughs> yeah, Baristo is asking if uh, I, I guess that performance for replication will be worse, more network steps and more resource utilization, proxy messages between servers. Is that right? Uh, do you mean that using this this approach instead of using one, uh, one uh, uh, Kubernetes service per receiver? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because the messages, some uh, oh, messages. Yeah. Some um, batches from the from the centers will end up in a different receiver. That so there will be yeah there will be more steps, more hops. Thank you. Ah, thank you. Yeah, actually, if you are interested in. <laughs> The in Kubernetes, uh, you have to watch the Michael and Aaron uh, talk. What we're really interested. Okay, I think you're welcome, Alberto. <laughs> any Alberto is asking any reason stopping the approval of the RFC? Uh, the uh, you you mean the one about the the um, serial gateway? send this right
Yeah. Well, actually, I I think I, I didn't receive uh, too much comments. Uh, I extended the deadline once, uh, but well, I can understand. Um, so I started the implementation, and I think from my side it's almost ready. So I think I will uh, send a, a draft pull request. Sometimes I think it's, I understand that sometimes it's easier to give comments when you see code. <laughs> so. Okay, then if, if there are no more questions, we can end here. Thank you for watching. So I hope you stay safe. Take care. <laughs> Bye.